Hello and welcome to Yarn Tell Make Along with Emma. Today I'm going to show you how you can make two granny squares into a really handy um, little purse. The pattern's in this year's brochure and it's a, it's a good one if you've always wanted to make granny squares and not made any yet or you've just started. Um, often people say, oh, I'm learning to crochet, I'd like to make a blanket. And um, a blanket's quite a big under undertaking, so you can make yourself a very useful little purse with two granny squares. So quite achievable um, with your first two grannies. Um, so what do you need? Um, we've used two strands of our sock yarn together. So this one is Hope and... Oh, now we've got me thinking, what did I use? I used Hope and Tristan in that one. Some of the colours are quite similar, I couldn't tell, so I used Hope and Tristan. And then I've made some other granny squares here, and I've used Tristan and Nigel. Okay, and I've really mixed the colours up here, so I've not, not tried to match. So you're using two strands together, so it becomes a bit of a, a, a double knit weight. So you can use two strands of sock yarn, or you could just use some DK yarn if you have some. Uses very little. Um, I'm using a three and a half millimetre hook, and also need... A darning needle to sew in those ends and a purse clasp. Now there are all sorts of different ones that you can that you can buy. This was just from our local haberdashery and it measures 10, 10 and a half centimetres across. Um, so a four round granny square, um, whatever your tension, pretty much should fit that because you can either stretch it or it'll be um it, it will fit. Okay, so I'm pretty certain that's um that's okay for your full round granny. I'm not going to show you how to make the granny square today um, because really detailed instruction in our week of grannies. So you need to hop over to, if you've not made a granny square before, watch the video, which is um, the classic granny square. Okay, and when you've got your two granny squares, which I've got here, I'll show you how you can transform your two grannies into one of these. Okay. So if you want, you can line your purse with some felt. So I've put um, a piece of felt in there and blanket stitched it around before I've joined them together. Um, I've done some where I've not lined it at all. And I've done others where I've used some um, little bits of some of my favourite Liberty um fabric so just some really little bits a bit a bit of a treat that is to put that in there but it doesn't need lining it depends what you're going to use it for um, but actually not much is going to fall between those it, it just depends it depends what you're going to use it for so if you want to line it with some fabric you can and just hand stitch it around on the wrong side I'm not going to with this one because I'm, I'm quite happy with how it is so I put my my wrong sides together so that's what it's going to look like. And I'm going to join my squares by double crocheting around the outside of just half of my squares. So I'll put my hook through that stitch there and the corresponding stitch on the other one there. So just check that your spaces between your, your treble clusters actually match so you've got, you're joining in the right part. Okay, so I'm going to use two strands together. So I'm going to carry on with my Nigel and my Tristan that I've been doing this. I love the way these colours are working. I can't think what they remind me of. Some kind of sweets probably from a holiday a long time ago when I was little. So I've got my hook in. Make a loop pull through the loop and then pull through both the tail and, and the working yarn, pull them both through to secure. Not doing a very good job of that. Okay, and then give the tail part a bit of a tug to make it nice and tight like that. Okay, so drop your tail, push that out of the way and we'll, um, we'll sew that in at the end. Okay, so working double crochet around so that the hook goes into the front square and the back square, yarn over and pull through like that. So through the front square, through the back square, all the time just checking that you've got, 
I didn't do that right then. Through the front, through the back. Like that. Okay, checking that you've got, what I was going to say was checking that you've got the right stitch on the back square so they're lined up perfectly. Okay, we go all the way around the bottom half. But I think once you start making granny squares, they are not just a little bit addictive, they're very addictive. I think I've got a house full of granny squares, that is. Okay. In the corner, probably about three double crochets will work. That works for me. So I've done three into that corner space and it's kind of turned around the corner. You get a nice little rounded corner if you do that. And then we're going to go across the bottom of the purse, making sure that you get, do you see what I did there? I only got one on my yarn, so make sure you've got both of them. Pull them through. Both of them. Pull them through. Just checking that I'm on the right stitch. Okay. So we're going all the way across the bottom. And it's worth just taking your time on this and just checking each time that you have got both strands of yarn and both stitches in the right place. Otherwise you'll get to the end and you think, hmm, <laughs> they don't match up. It's the finishing off that takes a bit of time on projects, but it's so worth doing carefully, so worth it. Go all the way across the bottom, you can see how that's going to join together really nicely. So these purses are great. I mean, I know these days we don't often have lots of change so if you're going to put a bank card in say or something like that with your keys definitely doesn't need lining I mean the holes are quite small I can imagine a five pence might wriggle its way out but it depends on your tension actually when you crochet I mean my my, my tension is quite loose and I think well I know that coins are fine in mine without lining it. Well, that's just another finishing touch if you want to. You can just pop a square of felt in. So I've got my three double crochets in the corner in that corner space again. So I'm going halfway up the other side. And then, once you've done that, all that there is that is left to do is to literally sew the clasp in place. And I'll show you the clasp. And one thing you need to do is check that your needle, whatever your needle is, goes through the actual holes so that you can sew it in place. Because a lot of darning needles are too fat. So you might have to have a hunt in your sewing box. Just check that you've got one that will, will go through. Okay, so I've gone all the way, halfway. So I've pulled through to fasten off. Okay, so look, we've got a bit of a bit of a purse there. Now you sew through these holes, catching the edge of your crochet as you go. And I'll just show you how to do that. Okay, so you can see my two needles. This is my normal darning needle. And this is a smaller one. 
So if I was to use my normal darning needle there and do my ends look, it doesn't go through the holes. So you just need to check that the needle that you've got goes through and it will do. Okay, you'd probably get a smaller one, but then you've got to try and get your yarn through the hole as well in the eye in the needle. So it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a juggle. It's a juggle, shall we say. We don't need double for sewing it in. You can just use one length of, um, one strand of sock yarn to go on there. So you match up the edge where you've crocheted them together to. Okay, I go through my clasp and through that first stitch. Give it a good wriggle and a pull. And then I go make it sure it goes through my crochet on the way back up and through the next hole. So I'm going up and down. So I'm going to go down through my clasp and then through my crochet. And you'll find that you've got what looks a bit like a looks a bit like a running stitch. So you go up through the crochet through the clasp and all the way around. So you end up, can you see how you've got a running stitch? So you can if you want to, and I did on this one. I went all the way around with my running stitch and then I went back around again and filled in the gaps. Okay, so that it's nice and secure and holding my, my crochet completely in place. If you leave the ends to sew in until you've done your clasp in place, so you've got, you've got your clasp in place, leave your ends here from the start Fold that up, pretend I've sewn all those in. Okay, we leave those ends, and perhaps there's a little gap from where you've joined. You can just sew that into the next into the next part of, of your crochet there and fill in a gap. You might find there isn't a gap. I mean there shouldn't be, but you just never never quite know. But you can use that just to sew in and tuck it in underneath the actual clasp. Okay, and there you've got a rather lovely purse with just two granny squares okay and then you can have a go at going and making a blanket but I'm guessing once you've um, managed to make one purse there might be a few coming off the off the hook um, perfect presents anyhow happy hooking <laughs>